Welcome to worship with St. Martin's United Church. We're so glad you're here with us today. We wish to extend a special welcome to the members of Grace Westminster United who are joining us for worship during the month of July. We're so blessed to have this summertime arrangement with our friends at Grace Westminster, and we look forward to worshiping together throughout the summer. Today is a communion Sunday. We invite you to have communion elements close at hand so we can all join together in our communion this morning. My name is Keith Hall, and I'm here with the other members of our worship crew, Ken Glover, Bob and Kathy Anderson, Betty Lou Agnew, and Jordan Cantwell. We want to express our deep gratitude to Betty Brazier for sharing part of her faith story with us this morning. This is the first in what we hope will be several opportunities for members of our congregation to share parts of their faith story with the rest of us. Sharing the everyday ways we live out our faith commitments inspires and encourages others in their own faith journey. Huge thanks to Betty for being the first to share her story with us. If you would like to share your faith story, please let Jordan know and we'll make it happen. Thank you to Carmine for lighting our Christ candle, to Brenda for reading scripture, and to Diane for offering the prayers of the people. Please take note of the announcements in this week's church chat and this important announcement about the wind-up of the Refugee and Permanent Resident Committee Congregational Survey. Hi, just a quick reminder about the Refugee and Permanent Residence Committee Survey. This survey was initiated in the church chat and messenger a couple of weeks ago, and we've had 32 replies, so we're really pleased about that. But we hope that many more of you will take the opportunity to fill out this short survey, it takes five minutes to do, um, about the future of refugee sponsorship within St. Martin's United Church. Our Refugee and Permanent Residence Committee is anxious to lay out a plan for the future, and uh, we hope that you will help us by giving us your opinions on certain pertinent topics. So please look for the link to the, to the survey in the church chat and messenger. And if you need a hard copy or a photocopied copy, please let me know and I will provide that as soon as I can. We know it's a busy time of year with everything winding up, so we hope you'll take the time to help us with this important work. Thanks. We acknowledge the first peoples of this land and give thanks for their care of these lands, waters, and air for thousands of years and still today. We grieve our church's role in the broken relationships that exist among the peoples of this land. We believe that the Creator calls us to healing and right relationship. Trusting in the power of the Spirit, we commit to the work of decolonizing ourselves and our church in actions as well as words. In this spirit of reconciliation, we, we acknowledge, acknowledge that we are gathering for worship on the traditional lands of the First Nations and the homeland of the Métis. We are all treaty people, bound by the understandings made in the agreement known as Treaty 6. It is the light of Christ that illumines our commitment to be an affirming congregation where people of all races, gender identities, sexual orientation, and physical and mental abilities experience true belonging. So from this Christ candle, we light our affirming candle. We also light our peace candle as we recall the words of Albert Einstein. Peace cannot be kept by force. It can only be achieved by understanding.
Gently walk upon the earth. Look with wonder, touch with reverent delight. For this is a world created by a loving God. Miracles are scattered all around. Rain-washed sky, sun-drenched earth, star-jeweled night, rainbow-blessed days, gifts of field and garden bestowed in abundance. Come worship God in the beauty of holiness. Come rejoice in the gift of creation. Come and celebrate. Fill the air with shouts of joy. Share laughter with a neighbor. Dry the eyes of a crying child. Fold in your arms a friend. Clothe the naked. Feed the hungry. Free the prisoner. Fill the earth with rejoicing and your lives with love. Let us pray. Compassionate God, be present with each of us today. Hold us in your love. Steady us and remind us that when we are rooted in your love, we can be channels of peace and hope and healing. We pray in the name of Jesus, who came to reconcile and make us new. Amen. Please join me in our responsive prayer for reconciliation. Oh God, we are a community of people deeply committed to your gospel of peace and justice. In our work and in our worship, we try to embody your love in the world. Thank, Thank you, you for, for giving, giving us a vision and, and for breathing life, life into, into this community, community of faith. faith. God of creation, we seek to be a community that embraces and celebrates diversity. We are more homogenous than we would like, and we struggle to understand why this is and how we can change it. When, when we, we get, get too comfortable with, with the way things are, are remind us of who we are and what we value. God of healing, we are a people devoted to building right relationship. This path is harder and longer than we ever imagined, and it's hard not to become discouraged. We pray for stamina and bless you for good companions on this journey. God of promise, as we move toward reopening, some of us are feeling excited and relieved, while some of us are feeling anxious and hesitant, and some of us are feeling all of the above. Breathe your spirit of peace and love into us, that we may move forward together as a community with care and understanding. Amen.
Our scripture reading today is from Micah, chapter 6, verses 6 to 8. With what shall I come before God and show proper respect to the high God? Should I bring an armload of offerings topped off with yearling calves? Would God be pleased with thousands of rams, with buckets and barrels of olive oil? God has shown you, O mortal, what is good, and what does your God require of you but to act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God? This is testimony from our ancestors in faith. Thanks be to God. This morning, we are blessed to have one of our own who is sharing uh, part of her faith story with us today. Betty Brazier uh, will be reflecting on her faith, life in faith, and um, how, how the way that she lives reflects her faith commitments. Um, and this is in the form of a, an interview with, uh, between myself and Betty. And we begin where I've just asked Betty um, what she most cares about. What is she most passionate about? Hmm. Well, I care about many things, I think. Um, I care about the environment. I care about people. I care about um, how we treat one another. And mostly I care about being a good, good human being. And I try to do that in the best ways that I can. And I, I'm not always successful, but um, I try my very hardest uh, to, um, to be who my parents taught me to be, you know? And, um, and that's, the, that's the, the call I feel from God too, is to be the best person you can be. And, and to always be striving for that. I guess I, I think that's how it shapes my life. That's kind of what guides me through life. And so how do you, how have you discerned that call? Or, or when you think about being the best person you could be, what does that look like for you, I guess? How, how do you hear, how specifically do you hear that call in your life? Um. I think it's grown over time um, and I hear it by the niggles that I feel in my gut and always have, um, you know, when I was a kid or, or even now to tell a white lie, there's that something, right? That pull of, wait a minute. Yeah. And just, I mean, actually just today we were having lunch and somebody had given us buns in a, in a Ziploc bag. And Kaylee said, <clears throat> oh, because we usually keep the bags. She said, oh, there's like kind of lots of butter on this. And I said, oh, throw it out. And I said, then I said, no, don't throw it out. I need to turn it inside out and wash it because immediately I got that gook in my gut, right? That that's not, it's the easy thing to do, but it's not the right thing to do. And so, I don't know if that even answers the question, Jordan. I can't remember what the question was, but <clears throat> that's how I feel God's call to me is in my gut to saying, just niggling, do the right thing, do the right thing. Thank you. What role, if any, would you say that the the church or, or your participation in church life has had or how, how does it feed that or does it feed that or... How oh, absolutely. That? I mean, um, I, you know, I, I, I was very confused as a young person about who God was and how Jesus fits in and all of that stuff. So I, I went to United Church, um, dragged actually <clears throat> to United Church. Um, and I left for quite a while until, until I um, was in a relationship and got pregnant and then I felt pulled back there. But even throughout that time, I had really faithful um, United Church folks who stayed in my life and who provided mentorship without providing mentorship, right? They were there, they were constant and um, cared about me even when 
I didn't care about myself and I was doing things that I'm not proud of doing and all of that kind of stuff. So they were there um, to care for me as my parents were as well. I mean, I've been very lucky in my life in that way. Uh, well, in all ways. <clears throat> um, so it's grown over time, but in that confused state, I remember reading a book by John Spong and I don't remember the name. He's written many books, um, but it was kind of a, that mind blowing and things started to come together for me. Like, you know, God isn't this man on a white cloud with a long white beard that I, that I, I couldn't reconcile what I was reading it biblically. And, and this, what we're taught in Sunday school or what, I don't even know if we're taught that, but that's, that's the message that comes through. So it really challenged a lot of my beliefs, but it helped me to um, put pieces together in a way that has informed my life. And so, um, and, and throughout my life, since, um, since coming back to the United Church, been really involved with, you know, had been blessed to have such powerful preachers and ministers and followers um, kind of surround me and help me along. So that's been, that's been huge. Awesome. Thank you. If you had, if you're thinking about your life, like all of the different things that you're, that you do in your life and that you um, are passionate about, um, how would you say, or, or would you say, like, has your faith shaped your choices about the kinds of work that you do or the kinds of leisure activities that um, you're involved in or, or how you've parented any, any of that? How would you say that your faith has informed that? Well, yeah, I mean, I, one of the things that this conversation has brought home for me again, like when we talked about having this conversation is how really um, how United Church people tend to be really bad at framing our lives and our stories within a, a spiritual or scriptural context. Like, I don't think we're good at that, or at least I'm not. Maybe I shouldn't be able to say that in a blanket kind of way. I'm certainly not good at that. So sometimes those questions are really difficult to answer because I don't have the language or the or the framework to hang those things on, right? <clears throat> so has, has my faith informed my choices about what I do in my life? I think, yeah. Like, I mean, um, I didn't know when I went to university what I wanted to do, and there were so many options, and I loved so many things. But psychology spoke to me um, in a particular way, I think, because it was a good blend of science and art the science and artistry that really made sense to me the thing that I didn't <clears throat> that surprised me that as I kept going was that it's so individual so you, it's a one person at a time kind of thing and my hope had been to change the world right when I was young and naive and um but as as it turns out you change the person you change the world by one person at a time and um, so it has been the right career choice for me. And, and certainly, um, certainly my understanding of service to God and in the world is, is lived out in, in the work that I do every day. Mm -hmm. And I think that, that's true for my, um, my leisure activities too. I love to garden. I love to bake. I love to cook. I love to share um the fruits of all of that so you know um get a great carrot harvest and i share it in the neighborhood and take it to the food bank and and the same with baking and cooking and you know, my neighbors love me and um but but to me that's what that's what it's about right it's a to do things that feed my soul but also feed the people around me Mm -hmm. I've, I've heard it expressed that the, the particular call in our life is the place where our deepest passion meets the world's deepest need. And that, that where those overlap is probably has to do with our call in life. And that's what I heard you just articulating. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. 
Was there anything else that you had thought about when you were thinking about what you, what you wanted to say? Hmm. Well, I, I guess, I mean, you had asked in one of the emails and, and I said, no, no, uh, about a scripture. And I, I, I think the scripture that um, I always come back to is, um, I don't, I can't even think of it now. Oh, what does the Lord require of you? I think it's from Micah to seek justice and love kindness and walk humbly. And I, I think that that speaks to me in a really profound way. Um, and I think that's all, that's the guiding force. You know, my folks were humble people and they didn't think very highly of themselves which is not a good thing, but there was a, there was a, just a down to earth, um, something about them that I inherited too. Um, and that, that ability to be humble, um, and to, to want to serve more than to receive is really, um, yeah, it, it's, it's a huge part of who I am. Um, yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. Well, that's terrific. I, this, this is, I mean, what you've just shared is such a great example of how it, just in, in the, in living our lives with intention, which is what I, mm. I hear you've named is that, that mm. you've intentionally wanted to make the world better and to, to share love with people and to care for the environment and all that, just by living our lives with intention. Um, and, and in your case, grounding yourself in the church and in scripture, that is, that that's how we are disciples of, mm -hmm. of Jesus. Like mm -hmm. it's, we, we embody that in our lives. It doesn't have to be some great, you know, we don't have to become missionaries and head off to the other <laughs> far ends of the world, but, but, but by carrying that deep faith commitment of wanting to do justice and kindness and to walk humbly, uh, taking that seriously and living that out is how we live our faith journey. Mm -hmm. So thank you for that. Like it's, mm -hmm. it's wonderful. Some, well, you, so you, what I thought I was signing up for, and I think I said this, was a practice. And there's something that I practice every day yes, that um, that's meaningful for me, and it's a way to ground myself. And um, I, I, it's a simple practice, but it's a, it's so, it's become so integral to to my life. And it, I light a candle. I have a three wick candle that I light every morning. And I simply sit with the candle, light one wick, and speak names out loud or situations out loud, whatever comes to my mind of of people and places and and situations that need to be held um, in love and and hope. And so I spend five or ten minutes doing that at the very beginning of the day, and. Um, I catch myself thinking of those folks in those situations through the day and being able to, again, just hold them for a second and move forward. So that's a really grounding um, and joyful way to, to start each day for me. Well, thank you for sharing that practice. That is a very simple, but very powerful practice. Mm -hmm. And again, beginning each mm -hmm. day with that kind of intention that to hold mm. the world and those in need of care in, in a place of love. Mm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing your story with us. It was wonderful. Thanks for asking Jordan. Loving God, having received freely, joyfully, generously of your many gifts, enable us to give freely, 
joyfully, generously, so that the sick may become whole, the discouraged may receive confidence, the sorrowing may know comfort, and the despairing be filled with hope. This we pray through the risen Christ, who in giving knows no limitation. Amen. Gracious God, you call us to ally ourselves with the spirit of health and wholeness in all creation. By the power of that spirit, grant us grace to live for others by sharing ourselves. We pray for the church, for this congregation, and all our ministries, for the United Church of Canada, for all Christian churches and all faith communities which seek to serve your purposes. We pray for peace with justice in our world. We pray especially for the peoples of Palestine and Israel, Hong Kong, Yemen, El Salvador, Ethiopia, for indigenous peoples of every land, and for all the places where the COVID vaccine has not yet reached. We pray for this country, Canada, for healing from the painful legacy of colonization and the broken relationships that persist. Grant us vision, hope, and commitment to build a future rooted in equity, mutuality, and respect for all peoples and the land. We pray for the guidance and inspiration of the Holy Spirit in our life together. We pray for all who are lonely, afraid, grieved, hungry, or sick. We pray for the health and well being of Mary, Attie, Marilyn, Kit, Clark, Cindy, Aiden. Laura, Ruth, Gary, John, Peggy, Lillian, Eunice, 
Nancy, Rowan, Pat, Dawn, Leanne and family, Jane, Gord and family, the Congregation of Samson United Church on Musquachee's First Nations, our Muslim neighbors who are feeling afraid, our Indigenous relatives who are grieving and traumatized, the friends and family of Owen Brecker, the friends and family of Dorothy Gilbertson, the friends and family of Martha Tapanilla, and all who are grieving a loss, and those whom we name now in the silence of our hearts. Most tender God, by the light of your spirit, you have shown us how to love. Enable us to live your love every day of our lives. We commend ourselves to your care and all for whom we pray, trusting in your faithfulness now and forever. Amen. kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Forever and ever. Amen. 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 Amen.
We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God, who is created and is created. Who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect and creation, to love and serve others. To seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. 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 God be with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift our, our hearts, hearts to God. God. Let us give thanks to God. It, it is, is right, right to give, give God, God thanks and, and praise. We praise you, God, for creating a world of such beauty and diversity. We thank you for teaching us how to live with respect in creation, how to love our neighbors as ourselves. We bless you for sending us prophets, ancient and modern, to call us back when we stray from your way of love and justice. We remember Jesus who embodied your compassion and revealed your presence. We remember his fearless solidarity with the beauty and brokenness of humanity and his relentless belief in your vision of peace and justice. We remember that those who feared this vision conspired to kill him. As he and his friends shared the Passover meal together, Jesus took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to them saying, this is my body broken, eat and remember me. Then he took wine, gave thanks and shared it with them saying, this is my blood shed because of sin. Drink and remember. We who eat this bread and drink this cup proclaim with our lives the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has, has died. died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. Holy Spirit, bless these gifts we offer, bread, wine, our bodies, our lives, as we eat and remember May we be transformed into the body of Christ in the world. Amen. Amen. Let us share in the gifts of this table and the one who welcomes us here. Jesus Christ, bread for the journey. Jesus Christ, cup of new life. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Let us pray. Christ, Christ you, have you have gathered us, us at your table, table to bear witness, witness to our, our unity, unity in you. 
fed and nourished, may we leave from here ready to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with you and with all God's children. Amen. Amen. Let us go from this time of worship, conscious of our calling, committed to service, with the guidance of the Spirit in our steps and the warmth of Christ's love in our hearts. And may the blessings of God be ours as we share them with others. Amen. <laughs>